Have you heard of the terms net present value or NPV and internal rate of return IRR and you are not sure what the difference is and how they can be used? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to make it super simple in today's video. But first I want to say I believe something great is going to be happening for you soon. And now back to the video. I want to thank those of you who are giving this video a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. In a prior video, we calculated the net present value for this particular project. The project initially cost $30,000 and we had a interest rate or otherwise known as a discount rate of 10% and then it had positive cash flows over the next five years of these amounts. So at least these are the expected or projected cash flows. And we had calculated in that video, and this one up here I've linked, we did it without a financial calculator. So if you don't have a financial calculator, you can use that video as a guide to calculate the net present value. But essentially what you're doing in net present value is you're using your discount rate of, in this case, 10%, and you're figuring out what the present value of those cash flows are. So I've got a, a chart here showing you in year one, $30,000 was outlaid to invest in the project. So the present value of that is negative 30,000. Of course, it's negative because the money is leaving the company to invest in this project. The first year cash flow is expected to be $11,000 because there is an discount rate of 10%, the today's present value, in other words, the day that they invest in this project, the present value of that $11,000 is $10,000. That's because of the time value of money. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar a year from now. That's because of inflation and how your dollar loses value over time. How quickly it loses value is dependent upon the inflation rate. But in this case, we're using a discount rate of 10%. Now, 10%, this discount rate does not mean the inflation rate, although inflation is factored into it. Inflation, the uh, discount rate is a, a, an amount that the company is using to evaluate a investment. In other words, it's the minimum amount that they would want to make on that investment. In this case, they want to make at least 10% on their investment. This number is arrived at through looking at many factors that the company considers, including what the inflation rate is, what the expected, expected inflation rate is down the road, and what other alternatives there are. For example, if the company were to just invest their $30,000 in U.S. Treasuries, that might be earning a certain rate. And as of the time of this video, the Treasuries are earning over 5%. So they would take that into consideration because that would be an investment in what would be considered a risk-free investment. And so if they're earning 5% risk-free, they wouldn't want to earn, they wouldn't want to invest in something that only earned 5% that had risk. We're presuming that this particular project has a certain amount of risk. The higher the risk, the higher, the higher the return that they would expect. So the company is going to assign a discount rate. It also might be dependent upon their cost of capital. They may have to go borrow this $30,000 to invest in the project and what is the rate that they are borrowing this money at? If they were borrowing it at 10% and are only earning 10%, that would make no sense because they'd be taking all the risk and not getting any of the reward. So they would base their minimum rate or their discount rate on what's their cost of capital and what are their alternatives and what is the inflation rate. So having said all that, if the company assigned a 10% discount rate or otherwise known as an interest rate, this is the present value of each of these cash flows. The 8,000 received in two years is only worth 
$611.57 today. In other words, if we invested $6,611.57 today at 10% in two years, it'll be worth $8,000. We did that with each of these, and I showed you how to calculate that. And when we find the net present value, we're netting all these. In other words, we're adding them up. So we're going to add up all of these, and of course, we're going to subtract the 30,000 from it because that's a negative cash flow and this is the positive cash flow going in and when we did that we arrived at a number of $10,116.55. So this had a positive net present value and therefore the recommendation would be for the company to invest in this project because it would add value to the company. It would be having a positive cash flow above the 10% that is required. Having said that, we would then want to figure out what the internal rate of return is. What is the internal rate of return? It's almost like the reverse of the net present value. It's not exactly the same, but what we're doing when we're figuring out the internal rate of return is we're saying at what discount rate, in other words, at what interest rate, would our net present value be zero? So it's going to really calculate the interest rate or the discount rate that you're earning through this project. And this is useful because you can then compare different projects of different lengths of time and different cash flows. So you would then figure out which one would earn the highest internal rate of return. Having said that, we've got the same $30,000 that's being invested, and we would have the same cash flows, because the cash flows, again, these are the projected cash flows. What we don't know is what their present value is, because the present value of each of these cash flows is dependent upon the discount rate. And since we don't know those, we don't know what the present value of those cash flows are. By the way, if you wanted to find the net present value using a BA2 plus calculator, I did that in this video linked above. Since we don't know what these are, it would have to be done through an iterative process. In other words, basically trial and error. The doing it by hand would be outside the scope of this video. In a, another video, I'm going to show you how to do it electronically, including how to do it with calculators such as the BA2 Plus and the HP 12C. Oh, by the way, if you do have an HP 12C and you want to know how to calculate the net present value using that, I do have a video linked up above showing you how to do that. So the bottom line is, our internal rate of return is calculated, and that would tell us what the rate of return is that for this project that would cause it to have a zero net present value. And we could then use that to compare to other projects and figure out what their internal rate of return is, and we would then determine what the which project we should invest in. And if there are different lengths, internal rate of return would be the best way to compare them. Of course, again, all these cash flows are in the future. It's dependent on how accurately we can predict the future. We know that we probably can't, but at least we can estimate what they would be. That's all I have in today's video. If you got some value out of this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.